when I was a kid and I was taking out this entrance exam for college, I brought a sneakers bar with me. Why? Because my review center officially recommended that we bring chocolates during the exam because it is allowed to eat during the exam, by the way. And it, the exam took, I think, at least four hours. And after the first hour, I decided to take out my chocolate, my sneakers bar, and eat it. And I regret that very moment because it just gave me a headache all throughout the exam. But luckily, I passed. But if I knew that there is another uh, alternative to boost brain focus and gain clarity, I would have chosen that and I may have performed better. So towards the end of this video, you will discover how to gain intense clarity and focus by utilizing this other fuel, which in my opinion is way, way, way better and superior than glucose. Stick around for tips on how to get this super fuel. Hi, Jonah of Primal Thinker here, and I want to have a little disclaimer here that I'm not a doctor of any sorts. I'm just a girl in the internet trying to connect the dots, sharing my own experiences with you. And if you're okay with that, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that I can share my Eureka moments with you. Alright, so that's the assumption. The next one is we break down this, uh, the, its fundamental principles and start questioning the truth behind the claim that our brains only run on glucose or sugar. Okay, that's the myth we're trying to bust here. I used to believe that for a long time, so every time I studied, I have chocolates, candies, and sweets. Okay, the sensible question now is, what if your body runs out of glucose? What does your body do? What happens is your insulin levels drop. You've heard of insulin if you've been watching my videos, right? And your body switches to fat burning mode. So if you lower down our sugar or carbs, because carbs is eventually breaking, broken down and turned into blood sugar, our insulin levels uh, also go down. And do you know what it means if uh, our insulin levels go down? You switch literally to fat burning mode. And when we eat, we increase the insulin again and we are in fat storage mode. And the cycle repeats on and on. And what triggers insulin, you know by now, is carbs, sugar, and if you frequently eat. Okay, so that's one key principle here, okay? So the question now is, okay, the body switches to fat burning mode if the glucose levels are low, which in result turning down the levels of insulin, and now we are in fat burning mode. But can fat fuel our brains? The quick answer is yes, because burning fat has a byproduct called ketones. So when our bodies uh, burn fat, it produces ketones. And ketones can directly fuel our brains. Okay? So that alone busts the myth that our brains can only run on glucose, right? It turns out that ketones is an alternative fuel for our brains. But the question now is, okay, we have two choices. It's glucose or ketones. But which is more efficient? Let me just have a sip of my coffee. And to answer this question, uh, let's put things into perspective. How much energy does the brain consume anyway? So that we know where we are. Your brain is only 2% of your body weight, but it consumes 20% of your total energy. And that makes your brain an official energy hog. So to give you some numbers, let's crack some numbers here. Let's say for the day your total energy expenditure is 2,000 calories and your brain consumes 20% of that. And that's a whooping 400 calories to fuel your brain. And what does it tell us? It means that we have to constantly keep our brains fuel because we are using our brains 24 seven and it consumes 20% of our energy. So it makes sense that we 
we have a steady supply of energy for the brain, right? So let's look at how many or how much does glucose and ketones provide for our brains. For the glucose, this is derived from carbs, and per gram of carbs offers four calories. Calorie is a unit of energy, right? And if we compute for that to address the 400 calories, we have to have 100 grams of carbs. And the other thing for keto, ketones, ketones is derived from fat. And fat, for uh, a gram of fat, we have 9 calories of energy. And that's only 45 grams to fuel our brain throughout the day. So here we can see that Oh, just a little fat and my brains will be fueled longer, right? Another perspective is the way our cells uh, use these two fuels. As I discussed in the previous video, our, our cells has insulin receptors. And for glucose to come in to enter these brain cells, it needs insulin to unlock the gates. Otherwise, uh, it cannot be used by our cells. On the other hand, ketones. Ketones is pretty much standalone. Once you have ketones in your blood, it's readily available for the brain, and your brain cells can directly metabolize these ketones. It doesn't need insulin or anything. That's another perspective. And this one, you also learned this from one of my videos, that your brain prefers around one teaspoon of sugar in the blood at any given time. And what happens when we eat sugar or carbs? Let's say the blue lane uh, is the safe range for the blood sugar. Whenever we eat, our blood sugar uh, rises. And if our blood sugar rises rapidly, the sugar crush that we experience after eating um, a heavy meal or something sweet we get tired, right? Because there, there's a rise and fall in our blood sugar and your brain doesn't want that. If anything, it's um, producing high levels of insulin and then suddenly it crashes. Nobody wants that type of uh, energy throughout the day. Like there's a time where you are hyper and then after a few minutes you become sluggish and tired or stressed even. And on the other hand, when we have fat, which produces ketones, your blood sugar is pretty much stable, right? Because we're not triggering, uh, we're not triggering insulin there. So this is the kind of stability that your brain wants. And I know this is pretty much getting one-sided, but I'm presenting you facts about these two kinds of fuel. And to summarize, uh, this is an important one, okay? The insulin, the level of insulin determines if you are in fat storage or fat burning mode. Keep that in mind, okay? And another one, your brain is an energy hub. It consumes 20% of your total body energy. So it makes sense to take care of our brains and fuel it every now and then, right? To provide it with a more efficient uh, fuel and obviously we are preferring or rather your brain prefers ketones over the sneakers bar and that makes ketone ketones the winner right I mean there's no question about that okay now that we know ketones is the preferred source of fuel uh, how can we apply this to our lives, right? So we create new solutions and using this principle that uh, fat, uh, your, your mode of fat burning and fat storage is determined by your insulin levels. It's simple, just stay in the fat burning mode as long as possible. Why? Because if we are in fat burning mode, the more ketones we produce, making it available for, for your brain. And we know that to lower the insulin, we need to lower our carbs. 
because carbs is the one triggering this insulin. And what does it mean? How can we do this? Well, for one, you know this low carb diet, it's super obvious. Just cut your sugar or carbs and uh, your insulin levels will naturally go down. And another thing is to only eat when you're hungry, which is, again, the mantra of intermittent fasting, because when we eat, we are, we are triggering insulin. And the idea of eating only when you're hungry is waiting for your insulin levels to drop before eating again. Because imagine this, if you're eating uh, five times a day, every 2.5 hours, you are triggering insulin levels to skyrocket every 2.5 hours. And did you know that it takes around four hours before your insulin levels go back to normal? Yes. So uh, don't be that guy who always eats and give your body some time to recover after eating. But what if you your insulin level is high for the moment? For example, you have this, um, you have insulin resistance, which I discussed in the other video, and you need an instant fuel for your brain. How can you use ketones? Well, this is where we introduce uh, exogenous ketones. Exogenous meaning the ketones will come from food or a drink or anything outside our body. Because in the previous um, solutions here, we are basically using our own fat to be used as fuel because burning the fat will produce ketones, right? And another approach is we get the ketones from outside of our body. And this is where the MCT oil, oil got its reputation. MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. It's derived from coconut oil. And as the name implies, it's a medium chain fatty acid, which makes it easy to digest and our body immediately converts it to ketones and therefore fueling up our brains. So it's an ingredient of the bulletproof coffee, if you've heard it, and this is the one I'm drinking right now. Whoa, I love this. And that results to directly feeding your brains whenever you uh, take exogenous ketones, like the one in this bulletproof coffee. And I want you to experiment. If you are required for the day to have some brain activity or intense focus or you need some clarity, fuel up your neurons, your brain cells by, by drinking a bulletproof coffee and let me know if that's effective for you. Thanks for watching.